Imagine that you are implementing a text editor and your current task is to design and implement a plugin system. Plugins are small and primarily implemented by the community programs that take an editor's context and manipulate it. The main goal is that the text editor and plugins can develop independently without blocking each other. The bridge design pattern is perfect for this purpose. The bridge is a structural design pattern that separates abstraction from implementation, allowing them to evolve independently. It decouples an abstraction's interface from its implementation, allowing changes in one without impacting the other. This pattern is handy when dealing with complex class hierarchies and when changes in both abstraction and implementation are expected. First, let's create a plugin system interface that has a single method that takes a plugin as an argument. Then, let's define an interface each plugin must implement and call it plugin. It has a single apply function that accepts an application's context and will be called from the register new plugin method. When a particular plugin is created, we must call the register new plugin method with it, and then its apply function will be called from register new plugin. The apply function can now manipulate the context, add context menus, change the text, add callbacks, and so on. As you can see, we ended up with a design with two parts in our architecture, one for our application and one for plugins. Both of these parts can be developed separately, and neither of them will block the progress of the other. There are three actors in this design pattern. The first is abstraction, a high-level interface that defines methods and properties for implementation and keeps a reference to the latter. The next one, implementation, is a low-level interface that defines the method and properties to be implemented by concrete classes. Concrete implementations are subclasses of implementation that provide the actual implementations. The bridge design pattern comes with various advantages. It offers a significant level of decoupling between abstraction and implementation. This means changes can be made to either side without impacting the other, making system maintenance easier. Additionally, the pattern facilitates extension, allowing new abstractions and implementations to be added independently without much fuss. On the flip side, it can introduce additional complexity to the system, particularly when there are multiple levels of abstraction and implementation. Furthermore, in scenarios where the system is quite simple, employing the bridge pattern might lead to unnecessary overhead, unnecessarily complicating both the code and the overall design. That's all about the bridge design pattern. See you in the next video.